1963, a huge year for the civil rights movement. A year in which Martin Luther King and President Kennedy both played a big role. In Birmingham, we'll look at first, because in chronological order that came first, and Birmingham led nicely into the, the March on Washington. And both had a big impact on what was to come. So first to Birmingham, Alabama. And you might remember this from Little Rock High School happening in another state in America. Well, to get around having to desegregate everywhere, uh, the city of Birmingham, Alabama just closed all the playgrounds, swimming pools, golf courses, parks and so on. And Martin Luther King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference tried to challenge this. Um, and they decided to use the tactics that had worked before. Confrontation peacefully. And so they called it Project C, which stood for confrontation. They'd use the same tactics they've used successfully, sit-ins, marches, all that sort of thing. And they, would ho they hoped that it would cause Birmingham, Alabama to desegregate and stop all this nonsense. What happened? Well, the demonstrations kicked off and Martin Luther King made a speech and he said it was better to go to jail in dignity rather than just accept segregation, which is not very dignified. And, well, as might be quite predictable, he was arrested on the 12th of April and stuck in jail. And whilst he was in jail, he wrote a letter, which became known as Letter from Birmingham Jail, and it was one of the most significant documents in the civil rights movement. It became published, loads of people read it. Um, and in that document, he, talked, he wrote about how African-Americans were tired and angry at their humiliating treatment, how people in the newly independent countries, black people in new independent countries or people of other different races had more rights than African-Americans did in a country that's supposed to treat all men equally. And... He said that people were tired of what had gone on and that the police were doing very little or nothing at all to help and, in fact, sometimes committed violence themselves against African-Americans. Most importantly, though, and this is the key bit to get, King pointed out the fact that there was tremendous poverty among African-Americans in a country of incredible wealth that goes around the world speaking about freedom and how great a country it is. So how can that situation be the case? Now, when uh, Martin Luther King was released from jail, things got even worse because it was decided that they should use children and students in the demonstrations. Uh, so it seems like a strange decision, but that was going to bring more publicity or maybe make the racist tone down a little bit. But no, the guy you see on your screen now, Police Chief Connor, uh, Bull Connor it was, it was what they called him, he decided to react to this by letting his poli the police set dogs on the protesters and use powerful water hoses that were so powerful they could strip the bark off trees, loosen bricks from walls. So, you know, they could knock your teeth out. And he also, bizarrely, because of the demonstrations, decided to put 2,000 demonstrators in jail, including 1,300 children. So... Basically, Bull Connor acted like the races had done before, with violence and discrimination, well, oppression, arresting children and played right into the hands of the civil rights movement because, of course, it was all on television and shown around the world of these children being arrested, people being blasted with water hoses, dogs being set on, just peaceful protesters. And this then meant that Kennedy had very little choice but to get involved. And what Kennedy said was, the events in Birmingham... Hold on, I should maybe have missed in that bit. The events in Birmingham have so increased the cries for equality that no city or state legislative body can prudently choose to ignore them. And that the events in Birmingham had damaged America. And it had damaged America around the world because it looked ridiculous that this was happening when all they wanted was things that should have been their right in the first place. So what did Kennedy do about it? Well, he decided to introduce a new civil rights bill. And the civil rights leaders decided this was an opportune time to march on Washington to demand that this civil rights bill went through uh, the Congress and, and Senate. 
However, all of this happened, um, and on the day that Birmingham managed to get the desegregation, the 11th of June 1963, the leader of the Mississippi National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, the NAACP, was shot dead by a white sniper. So, there's still terrible oppression for the black people going on. And so to the march on Washington that all of the key groups took part in in the civil rights movement. The NAACP, CORE, SNCC and the SCLC. We'll, if you're not sure about those acronyms, we'll, we'll make sure you've got them by the exam. 1863 was when the slaves were officially freed. 1963, they wanted to do a march to commemorate that event. The people of Washington, the president, the government were a bit worried that violence might break out. And actually, Martin Luther King was as well. Um, but part of the reason why he wanted to make sure this happened was to try to stave off violence. He wanted change to happen quickly so that the people who were impatient and liable to violence didn't get a chance. Well, they expected that there'd be mm, less than 125,000, so they thought there might be 100,000 people, which is Wembley Stadium. Now, it's a colossal number. 250,000 demonstrators turned up, and it's also estimated that about 80,000 of them were white. So remember, the civil rights movement isn't black versus white. A lot of white people were part of the civil rights movement on the side of the, the black people. And they came from all across the United States, and every time they saw a politician, they chanted at them to pass the bill. Pass the bill. Lots of different speeches were made through the day. And they were quite controversial, some of them. And all of it, this is quite significant, were broadcast on television to the rest of the United States. But of course, the big speech, the famous one, the I Have a Dream speech from Martin Luther King, that's the one that got people's attention and has gone down in history as perhaps one of the greatest, perhaps even the greatest speech ever made. So here it is. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be, be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. Crucially, you need to know what the effects of all of this were. Well, of course, it raised a huge amount of profile for the civil rights movement. Loads of people saw it. The speech inspired people. But not everybody thought it was a, a great moment. Malcolm X, one of the other leaders of the civil rights movement, who believed in a more forceful approach, he called it the farce on Washington. Um, also, President Kennedy, a positive, is that he reaffirmed his commitment to the civil rights movement. You know, the President of the United States was saying, I believe in this movement and I want to make sure this change happened. Not every politician, particularly some in the Republican Party, um, were willing to back the civil rights bill, but the President was determined and lots of politicians were in support of it. However, as with the Birmingham, Alabama thing, they got the equality there, they'd had a great success in the March on Washington, and violence still happened. So on September 1963, four black girls going to Sunday school, young black girls, you can see an image of them on the screen, were killed in a bomb. And violence erupted on the day of the bombing because of the bomb. So there's still this, well, K 
killing going on in the background to try to keep this civil rights movement from being able to be successful. So there you go, 1963, a huge year for the civil rights movement, but there was one final negative issue that occurred in 1963, and President Kennedy had said after the March on Washington, you know, he was fully in support. He made it quite clear that he wanted the civil rights bill to pass. I mean, he'd proposed it in the first place. But then in November, he was shot and killed, which shocked the world and certainly saddened many in the civil rights movement. <laughs>